Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Geopod. I'm your host Dylan Woods and today I'd like to discuss the recent rocket attack on northern Israel on the Golden Heights which caused the life of between approximately between 10 and 50 Israeli civilians, most of them children and wounding approximately 30 others. So to start off this has been one of the most deadliest attacks by Hezbollah ever since they amped up their campaign against Israel on October the 8th, one day after the 7 October terrorist attacks by Hamas. Um, what this shows you is that Hezbollah shows no interest whatsoever in de-escalating de its tensions with Israel and rather wishes to pull Israel closer or rather drawing them into yet another conflict in order to place more international scrutiny upon the Jewish state and hopefully to deplete their resources and deplete their stockpiles, making them more vulnerable for future attacks. So let's look at the facts and data surrounding this latest attack. So what we know based upon satellite images, data and intelligence assessments is that the strike was launched from the north of Sheba, which is a village in the south of Lebanon where Hezbollah reigns supreme. Now, the place that was targeted was a community called Masdal Shams. It's a, a Golan community occupied mostly by Druze inhabitants, Arabs, and they have been under a lot of threat ever since Hezbollah amped up their rocket and missile attacks towards the north of Israel. 53 up until 80,000 civilians had to evacuate from the north ever since Hezbollah amped up its campaign and are still not able to return and probably won't be able to return for the foreseeable future, especially after an incident such as this. So what we know or what we think we know based upon imagery, based upon witness statements and intelligence assessments is that the area surrounding or in close proximity to a soccer field was struck which resulted in most of the casualties being children. Now, this is very interesting to note. We know from recent statements and from surveillance footage released by Hezbollah that Hezbollah has performed a lot of reconnaissance around Israeli military bases, Israeli missile defense systems, Israeli military headquarters in and around the north. So we know they have locations, geographical data upon those locations. We know they have some sort of image regarding their defensive layouts, regarding their vulnerabilities, their weaknesses, and so on. So that raises the question, why do they strike a civilian area? Why do they strike a site which stands in no relation to military infrastructure? The very military infrastructure they have claimed to have, rec uh, have performed reconnaissance around and have performed surveillance around for such a long time? Well, that, quite, that question can be easily answered. First of all, Hezbollah is a terrorist organization. It doesn't give a fuck about who it kills. Simple as that. It aims to kill Jews. Whether those Jews are children, whether those Jews are soldiers, whether those Jews are diplomats, it doesn't matter. They want to kill Jews. That's their purpose, that's what they're there for. They want to eradicate the Jewish state of Israel and all its inhabitants. Just as the same as Iran, the same as Hamas, the same as the Houthis, exactly the same. Now, what is ironic about this is that given the efficiency of their attack and given the fact that it wasn't intercepted by the Iron Dome missile uh, rocket defense system, it could have easily been a very successful strike against actual military infrastructure that Israel might have used against them in a future conflict. So from a strategic point of view, military strategic point of view, it's utterly ridiculous. From a PR point of view, however, and I will delve into that a little bit deeper um, later in this clip, it stands more in line with their agenda. Now, before I want to delve into all of that, let's take a look at the technicality surrounding this strike. So, Again, what we know is that Hezbollah has performed a lot of surveillance around the Golden Heights, has selected a lot of targets for potential rocket and missile attacks, and obviously has learned from its exchanges with Israel ever since October 8th, and even before that time, where there were sometimes an, a surge in, in, in 
tit for tat exchanges if you will which most of the time didn't last longer than a few couple of days but then again it's data and then again it's experience that one or two parties can can learn from and take their lessons from so the trial and error was definitely a huge part of the success right like hezbollah has almost launched rocket and missile attacks upon israel on a daily basis most of which were intercepted by the iron dome missile defense system or by israeli aircraft directly but it's trial and error it's data to learn from and what we show what have, what they have shown now is that they have indeed learned from it because the iron dome rocket defense system as far as the israeli statements go wasn't able to intercept the rockets in time like they knew the threat was incoming they could perceive the threat but the rockets were either launched at such a low altitude or uh, were consumed for such a long time that it wasn't um, plausible for the iron dome rocket defense system to intercept them which obviously resulted in the loss of life that we're now confronted with so what we've seen what we're seeing is that although israel's missile defense and rocket defense systems still prove to be incredibly efficient all across the board that its adversaries are learning and that they're developing new tactics and new strategies to bypass those defensive measures and actually hit and kill civilians civilians who have already been living on the threat for more or almost nine months now so if you're israel you're gonna look at this and say well how do we gonna retaliate because this tit for tat kind of strategy well it can't last much longer because guess what the threat our citizens are faced with isn't diminishing so if you are a country and you are the armed forces of a country and your main objective your responsibility your sworn duty is to protect said citizens it's time for a more dramatic course of action hezbollah isn't going to go away hezbollah isn't going to cease hezbollah is looking to manipulate sabotage and harass the state of Israel up until its eradication in their point of view. So it's a threat that needs to be addressed sooner rather than later. So now the possible fallout from this can be, what we will see probably is that Israel is gonna amp up its airstrikes in Lebanon. I'm not really sure if at this point in time they aim to launch another ground invasion into another foreign territory but i do believe they will amp up the airstrike significantly pretty much in the same manner as they did in gaza before they initiated their their ground invasion there so that's probably what's going to happen they're going to probably look to striking positions striking headquarters taking out commanders of um hezbollah's unit especially its specialized rod one unit who has the capability of infiltrating beyond lebanese borders into northern israel so they're probably going to look to take out as much as these commanders in an early stage, take out as much of these launch sites, as much of these weapon uh, depots, so that by the time eventually or potentially they're forced to enter Lebanon by means of ground invasion, they can do so much more efficiently and they will be left, well, less opposed, let's say, as they would otherwise. The problem lies in the following, and that's Hezbollah's almost endless stockpiles of missiles and rockets, which is cont uh, continuously refueled by uh, the Iranian regime in Tehran. Hezbollah right now possesses among the largest stockpiles of rockets and missiles in the world. It's larger than approximately 80% of the world, the, the armed forces, the legitimately armed forces of the world, let's say. Um, so that means that they have more weapon systems, more missiles, more rockets, more launch uh, systems than many militaries sovereign militaries around the world so that by itself poses an incredibly dire threat and apart from that hezbollah has proven to be highly resilient in its last conflict with israel in 2006 which ended in a very uneasy truce which in the wake of that was immediately broken by hezbollah i might add uh, now on the other hand we might also look at iraq where which has seen a huge surge of shia militias in recent times Iranian loyalists who have shown to be more than eager to not only attack uh, Israel, but also US and other Western interests within the area. Apart from that, we have the Houthis in Yemen who might amp up their attacks towards Israel and towards uh, um, shipping lanes within the Red Sea in the wake of another invasion by Israel. And then we haven't even spoken about Iran. What is Iran gonna do if Israel indeed chooses to amp up its campaign against Hezbollah, which I believe it will. Will we see direct support from Iran or will we see 
a more laid back approach? Will it rely on its missiles? Will it rely on its drones? Or is it actually gonna send soldiers into the fray? As of right now, we have to, we have to understand this. The entire cause, the reason behind Iran's proxy networks is that they provide it with layers of protection so that it doesn't need to directly enter the fray in cases such as this. That's one of the reasons why they have the proxy network to begin with. So for them to send a, a significant amount of troops, let's say, into the fray at this point in time will prove to be, well, a bit redundant because why would you have the proxies to fight the wars for you to begin with if only you were going to enter the fray um, with such quantities if shit hits the fan. Now, on the other hand, the proxy network relationships work on a, a, a basis of mutual benefit, uh, for mutual benefit, let's say. So that means that, yes, Hezbollah, the Houthis, Hamas, the Shia militias within Iraq, yes, they follow Iran's whim to a certain degree, but that comes on the condition of Iranian support and protection. So what Iran, Iran is most likely going to do is do the same thing it did before and large barrages of missiles and drones towards the Jewish state, hopefully overwhelming its airspace, overwhelming its air defenses so that its proxies will have a higher rate of success in their missile and rocket uh, attacks towards the Jewish state. Another development that I, I believe we will see is more coordinated attacks between Hezbollah, the Houthis, Hamas, Iran and the militias within, uh, within Iraq. With, like I said before, the aim will be to overwhelm Israeli airspace, to overwhelm the air defenses, so that at least some of such rockets and missiles will hit crucial targets and will cause a lot of damage. And therefore will put a lot more pressure on the Israeli government um, as if it no longer can keep its own civilians safe. What's also interesting to note is that the timing of these attacks says a lot. Benjamin Netanyahu has spent the last couple of days, I believe it's already almost a week as of this point, in America trying to gain further support from his campaign in Hamas and for a future campaign against Hezbollah or other Iranian proxies within the region. So obviously Hezbollah wants to, wants Israel to remain where it is right now, which is under huge global scrutiny, right? If Israel has the ability to paint a better PR picture of itself and to evade and elude some of that scrutiny, it will get more support for any potential conflicts it wages against Hezbollah and other Iranian interests within the region. So Hezbollah wants to bypass that. Many people opt saying that Hezbollah doesn't want the war with Israel, Hezbollah want, wants to dissuade Israel from waging a war against it. It, it. That couldn't be further from the truth. If Hezbollah wants to dissuade Israel from waging a war against it, it wouldn't have attacked it every day for the past nine months. Hezbollah wants to draw Israel into another war because one, they understand that more accounts of civilian casualty ratios, of disturbing imagery, is only gonna add more pressure upon the Israeli government to seize their campaigns, not just in, in Lebanon in the future, but also currently within Gaza. Secondly, they believe, based upon their last interaction with Israel in 2006, that they have the ability to survive another, another full-scale conflict with the Jewish state, that they're gonna be able to survive, they're gonna emerge from it, and that they will remain in control of at least the south of Lebanon for the foreseeable future. Iran and its proxies have smelled blood in the wake of the 7 October attacks. What they wish to do now is optimize the vulnerabilities they have, they have seen within the Jewish state's defensive posture and at the same time built upon the developments that are currently going on, um, which is a huge scrutiny, a huge besmirching of Israel within global media as well as within the international community as a whole. So they wish to optimize both these things and see, well, how far can we push it? Is Israel really as resilient as we believed it to be on both these fronts? Or is there actually much more to gain for us here? So it will be very interesting to see how that will play out. Anyway, as of right now, these are my thoughts regarding the situation. And these are my theories and analyses, if you will, of how the situation might play out. We have to remember though, that Hezbollah is the one who launched these attacks. 
Hezbollah is the one who started their campaign in the wake of the 7th October attacks against Israel. As much as they are trying to create these alternative narratives, the data speaks for itself. This is not based upon opinion, this is based upon data. This is based upon intelligence assessment, this is based upon satellite imagery. It's there. So the reason why they are trying to deny their involvement now, saying we haven't strike, we haven't struck this area, it was not a rocket based of, uh, launched from one of our sites by one of our people, well, that this doesn't add up, given the fact that we know what we know, which is for every day, or almost every day, for the past nine months, you have launched rockets from similar sites, similar rockets, uh, targeting a similar area. So, yes, you were behind it, and yes, you're trying to escalate the tensions with Israel further, because you believe that in the end, the proxy network that you're a part, uh, that you're a part of can prove to be victorious against the Jewish state, whether in the short term or in the long term. This is all I want to share with you today. If there are any other developments that will arise in the future, I will be sure to discuss them here on this channel. So please feel free to leave a like. For, uh, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'm hoping to disseminate more content in the near future. And obviously, whenever something like this happens, I will feel obliged to discuss it a little bit and provide you with my theories and opinions. Thank you again for listening to this clip. I wish you all a blessed day. Thank you.